What's up guys, Charlie and Nick here, back for episode 29 of the Goliath Gamecast. This is a bit of a special episode, it's our 2017 year in review, which we'll be going through our top five games, uh, our most disappointing games, yeah. and our list of games that kind of surprised us. Now, we are just coming back from our uh, holiday break, and uh, we mentioned in a previous episode kind of our backlog and stuff we were hoping to get to over the break. Yeah. Nick, did you get to any of that stuff? What were you playing over the break? Um, I got to a decent amount of it, actually. Yeah. Um, so, a game I had prioritized getting to, um, primarily because of these Game of the Year discussions, was uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Um, I had played about 10 hours of it or so when I first got my Switch, but then I just kind of put it aside, because this was back when, like, ARMS was coming out, like, Splatoon and all that. And, yeah, you, know, you were on like, reviews you know, then. Yeah, for, so for it was kind of, games. yeah, right? And So I had, like, enough of other stuff to play at the time, um, so I figured, like, okay, I'm going to put Zelda on the back burner for now. I know I'm going to get back to it, but then I just kept not coming back to it, and finally I was like, no, then we're, I'm, I'm playing this yeah. game. <laughs> I'm going to invest some time. So, yeah, I probably put, I don't know, like, like 15 hours in like over the break or so like um finally beat one of the first divine beasts um on my way to the like second now and yeah loving this game a lot more um another one that i had not planned on playing but ended up actually dominating a lot of my time was um overwatch oh yeah yeah um they were having, yeah well they're having you know their like annual winter um event or whatever right and it's like me and um, my roommate were just like, oh, look at those skins. Oh, man, we got, we got to get some new stuff. <laughs> and we just we were playing a ton of that. And, man, I love that game. It's cool because it's like I can keep coming back every time there's a new event or something. Like, yeah. I probably will set it aside now until I think they're probably going to do, like, another, um, like, Chinese New Year event. Yep. Um, yeah, just a good time to get back in. It's like a, they've added, like, since I played last, there was, like, a new character. They've made some, like pretty substantial modifications to like other characters but i had to kind of relearn how to yeah. play them i'm like what the heck you know this this person has a rocket attack now like this is weird and um yeah really like setting the standard for like an how to ongoing continue. game yeah, yes really definitely. impressive what yeah and we're actually gonna start watching like a um me and my buddies we're gonna start watching um the overwatch league soon like it's gonna be like the kind of big like championship tournaments. Like we're gonna like I could pick a team that. and like actually watch it because we're like this, this be kind of fun. Never really gotten into esports, so no. I, yeah. and I I mean I've never really got into watching even like streams of stuff until PUBG. No, yeah, PUBG yeah. is a great game to yeah. watch on streams, and and Overwatch would be absolutely a fantastic like esports game to watch. Yeah, I think so, and it's gonna it's gonna quickly make me realize that I really am not good at that oh, game. Oh yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, um, but what'd you get to? Um, so I had a big long list. I got to a few things on there. Um, over the break, I picked up. Uh, I mean, we should talk about. I guess did you did you buy any games on sale over over the break at all um, too, or, or pre? I I picked up um, Hellblade. Mario? Oh, you did buy it. Yeah, right. I, I bought it, but I have not gone okay. to it yet. Was so. it on sale? Or? Yeah, there okay. was a sale, like the holiday sale on the PlayStation Store, and then I also picked up Pyre. Yes. And I did start playing a bit of that. And so did I. So I yeah. guess we could start there. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. uh, really enjoyed Pyre. Um, it's kind of like a sports game mixed with an RPG. Uh, like a lot yeah. of the tactics that you use in the game are, are feel like you're playing a sports game in, in the game part. Yeah, it's... Um, I mean, I think I've I've only put maybe like an hour and a half into it That's so about far. the same that yeah. I have, actually. So, like, I'm really not good at, like, the the gameplay yet. Like, I'm kind of like, what, what do I do yet? Because you have to, like... It's like a three on three. It's like, it feels kind of like um, like NBA Jam a little bit. It does. Bit. It's got like yeah, basketball, soccer, so handball weird. kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, because you have to like pass, you know, to your team. But it's like only the person who has the ball can actually move. Well, it's like an orb, whatever, and you have to score it into the other team's. I don't know, like their aura or something, yeah. and you do damage to it, right? And you have to protect yeah. your own. And different and... characters have uh, different Dur yeah. specialties, yeah. and you know their bigger ones move slower, and yeah. And kind of a cool, like, universe, too. It's like you're in this, like, purgatory, and yeah. it's like these, like, like really, like, cool design characters. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah there's I'm a really it. interesting system, like, a uh, uh, world, um, the graphics are gorgeous, art, beautiful art, art style, style. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, built around this um, sports-like gameplay mechanic. Yeah. Anyways, I played that. Uh, I also picked up um, Everybody's Golf oh, on the yeah. PS4, which is uh, basic, I can't remember if it's from... 
the people who made Hot Shots or not. It's it's Japan Studio. I actually picked up oh. two Japan Studio games. Everybody's Golf and <laughs> Knack Two. Finally picked up Knack Two. Oh, did you play Knack Two? I didn't. Two? I didn't oh, get a okay. chance to. My nephew and I actually <laughs> played through Knack One co-op together. So I'm actually kind of saving it for him and I to play oh, through okay. as yeah. a co-op experience. Yeah, because you were a fan of the original. Knack. I was a fan of the original Mac at like a thirty dollar price point. Sure. When it, when it came out yeah. at full release, um, at full price. Uh, not so much, but like for a thirty dollars game, I thought it was nice looking okay, enough yeah. and a decent platformer, and I thought the character was interesting. I just all I could think about that game was, man, if they get a second crack at this, they can really refine oh, yeah. this and and do it a lot better. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see uh, heard, how good. Next I've heard anecdotally is. that it's better. Yeah, yeah. So but still that's not a game I'd like, like to try. I feel yeah. like yeah. I enjoy. I enjoyed the first one, so I played sure. that. Um, I played a lot of Worms on the Nintendo Switch. Worms, so okay. So Worms was a game, like, I'll pick this up um, and see, because I, I played it, like, I played it way back in the 90s on my friend's sure. PC. Like, this game's been around forever. Oh, yeah. Multiple so versions are yeah. on multiple consoles. Um, but I thought it'd be a great game to play with the kids. So I had my two boys here and my nephews, and we all got in a big game of Worms, and we ended up playing it for, like, four hours. At oh. first, they're, it's hard because it's hard to convince kids, let's play Worms. They're like, no, I want to play a first-person shooter, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> we'll but, play PUBG. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, once you play a few games, you really kind of get into, like, you know, how, how movement works, jumping, selecting weapons, all the different crazy weapons you can use. And there's also, like, that really fun, you know, backstabbing mechanic. You can mm -hmm. kind of be like, oh, don't kill me and I won't kill you. And then the person doesn't kill you, then you kill them. <laughs> that went down yeah. many times. Okay. There's yelling. And, oh, man, it was pretty intense. So I actually played... Quite a bit of worms. I also picked up a Wii U again. I got my uh, Wii U back. I sold it right before the Switch came out to kind of maximize yeah. its value. Um, so I was playing a little bit of uh, Tank 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 on, on the Wii U. Is I'm not familiar with that one. Okay, no. that's something we need to try. Cause okay. It's a fantastic game on the Wii U that, uh, again, a lot, not a lot of people play because not a lot of people own the Wii yeah. U. Um, and it also came out at like a full priced game. I think it might have been a launch game actually. Oh. Um, that should have been like 20 bucks. So yeah. it was really overpriced, but yeah. really fun, fun game. So yeah, that's all the stuff that I really got to oh, yeah. over the break. I think, you know, here and there I played a couple other uh, Switch games. I played a little bit of, um, actually I also picked up um, L.A. Noir on the Switch. Oh, okay. How does it play? Uh, really good. Yeah? Seems to handle really well. Graphics look great. Dialogue's fantastic in that game. Um... I'm, I'm a big fan of that game. I got stuck I, I really in the first like it, but... case where you have to like interrogate <laughs> yeah. someone and I kept on getting it wrong. I'm like, oh, he's yeah. lying. And I'm yeah. like, uh, what is it? You can like accuse or whatever. And there's like, yeah. nope, start over. So I kept on uh, having to start over and then I just put it down and moved yeah, on to something yeah. else. So. Um, oh, one thing I did want to mention was that I did actually play quite a bit of stuff um, on Christmas Day because I brought... Um, my Super Nintendo Classic oh, yeah. and my PS4 over to my parents' place. Nice. Because they hadn't experienced like either of these before. Oh, to play so, with your parents? Yeah, That's yeah. Cool. So I was playing, um, you know, like the Donkey Kong Country games uh, <laughs> with my parents. They were like, just like blown away by like, it's like, look how small it is. Yeah. And they're like, all the games are on there? <laughs> I'm awesome. like, yeah. And then they're like, those cords are a little short. I'm like, yeah, everyone has that problem. Yeah. yeah just... So we had to like, yeah, we had to like pull chairs up to the TV, right? Because it didn't like reach the couch really. And, That's uh, awesome. but that was fun. But the, the big, um, feature was, uh, the Crash Bandicoot insane trilogy oh, okay. on the PS4 because my parents like Crash Bandicoot games are probably their favorite games of all time. Like nice. we used to play them like over and over, right? Yeah. Like hundred percent them, whatever. Right. And so I was like, you know, I told them, it's like, oh yeah, they re-released them on the PS4 and like the graphics are better and they have them all collected. They've added time trials. They're like, holy crap, I'm going to play this. So <laughs> yeah, they were playing them and they're like, wow, these games were hard, weren't oh, they? Yeah. But they're, you know, right back in. So yeah, afterwards my dad's like, I, I think we could get a PS4. Yeah, they, <laughs> they're on sale it. right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, um, yeah, it remains to be seen. Uh, we'll... I'll update you on if they do purchase one. Well, uh, they'll, people... they'll be a Crash Bandicoot machine because I doubt they're going to play much else on well, it. Well, they could also use whatever. Netflix. They can also use it as a Blu-ray player. That's yeah. how a lot of people justify the, the PS4 yeah. purchase. I mean, it would be an improvement on, what, on their gaming habits now because they're like Candy Crush on their oh, iPads. Really? I'm like, God, guys, they're so much better out there. But yeah. they're like, hey, we like this. Yeah. It's like, okay. Yeah, yeah it's like sure. my nephews. They play a lot yeah. of like, it's called like Boom Beach or something. I'm like... Man, you guys could be spending your time with <laughs> like, such better games. I don't know. It's like sometimes I kind of like, it's like I wish I could be one of these people yeah. because it's like, man, then I'm 
without spending anything. Yeah, no kidding. You know, it's like, oh, it's not very expensive, yeah. So, yeah, it sounds like we, at least I didn't play as much video games as I was hoping to over the break. You I never do, I feel No, like, I know. No. I envisioned myself of, like, literally waking up at 8 <laughs> and playing day. video games yeah. <laughs> until I go until to bed. Until dinner or something, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. I'm going to do that for yeah. at least know, two yeah. days. Yeah. It never happens, nah, so. but... But uh, yeah, a good break. So we are back uh, with episode 29 of the Goliath Gamecast. And we're going to be going over first our top five games of 2017. Yeah. We have discussed many times what a fantastic year 2017 has been. Definitely up there among the best in terms of, uh, you know, game releases yeah. and console releases. Really like hard Switch. to um, narrow it down to five games. Yes. But I feel like then you're really getting to, like, the best of the best. But I mean, also, like... Like, between the two of us, we still weren't able to, like, get to, like, everything this year. Like, there's, like, well, quite a few some. things we Well, let's name some. Like, what did you not get to that you um, wish you would Well, have? I mean, Hellblade was one. That's that, like, one I mean, of I'm, mine, I'm too. going to get to it. It's yeah. just I wasn't able to over the course of the year. Um, oh, jeez. Uh, what Remains of Edith Finch? I keep hearing, like, great things I about this game. i got to try that one. You know? And I don't know enough about that one. No. Um, it's kind of like one of those walking simulator type games. But yeah. I, I hear that it, it just... Um, just does it in such a better way than like kind of competition um it's another one like even like PUBG, I i didn't really get into yeah in pub g's one you gotta try for sure yeah um I uh call of duty i didn't yeah, play call i totally of duty missed World call of duty II. yeah um I, I wouldn't mind picking that up i just want to play through the single player campaign i don't really care about call of duty multiplayer anymore i just no, kind of me neither i was never very good at it and it, yeah. It's not a whole lot of fun for me. Yeah. Uh, probably number one on my list is Uncharted Lost Legacy that oh, I didn't play. Okay. Yeah. But I've been holding off on that one because I never actually finished four. Oh. Uh, wow. And then I was saying, like, it's been so long since I played it, I probably have to start that over. Have to start over. So that might be well, something I mean, that's I not so bad. Start. That's a game that you can. I mean, the Uncharted games, I, I can play them, like, over and over, like the campaigns. I well, played, so. I played from one to three. Uh, I replayed one to three. Oh yeah, right before Watch. the release yep. of four. Yeah, and I think by that time I had like you were a maybe little got out, fatigued. Out. Yeah, and then when yeah. it came to playing four, yeah. like in, in anticipation, then I just ended up not finishing it or not even getting too far. Through that makes it, sense. So. Yeah. Um, what else? Wolfenstein two I didn't play, but I yeah, did pick I didn't up. Really get to that. I picked up that double pack of um, Wolfenstein. What is it? Uh, New Order and, and Old Blood. Yeah, that's right. So I didn't play Old Blood. I didn't finish that. So I kind of want to no. finish that before I get to two anyways. I'm in, I'm in the same boat. It's like I want to, yeah, finish the originals first. Yep. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, um, what else here? In terms like of... This. Of, like, big games that you kind of wanted to play, I, I feel like. Um, yeah, Metroid uh, Samus Returns I missed on the 3DS, mostly oh, because... Man. I, I keep just, forgetting about that game. Yeah. Like, I liked it a lot. Yeah, I heard yeah. great things about yeah. it. Yeah, you wrote the review on, yeah. on Goliath.com. Check that out if you guys want to. Um, yeah, so, I mean, just so many games this year, it's really hard to to get to everything. You can't. It's I just, feel like yeah. in previous years, probably before I had a family, it was easier for me to do, but, yeah. I mean, it's all about, like, managing your time, and if, if that's what, how you want to spend your time, then that's great, but, you know, most people have other things that they're interested in, and... Um, oh, sure. Devoting that much time to games is, is a like, hard thing to do. It's a divide between gaming and Netflix these days for no me, kidding. I feel like. It's like, oh man, I want to right. want to watch this show, but then yeah. it's like, oh, it's cutting into my gaming time. and uh, No and kidding. Stuff, yeah. Before I know it, I binge-watched on a Saturday the whole American <laughs> Vandal series. I'm like, that cut into my gaming <laughs> yeah, time, yeah, right? There you yeah, go. So, yeah, either way, 2017, a fantastic year. Sure. So moving into our top five games of 2017... Uh, Nick, what would you put as your fifth favorite game of 2017? Well, first I'll just mention that th oh, yeah, these, are our, that. these are our favorite games. <laughs> not right? the best. No, we're not saying, You're... we're not declaring these are the best games of the year. I think quite a few of them will fall into that kind of category. Well, when you do these videos, it's always someone's opinion. Of there's course, no There's no way to have a definitive list. And people always say, like, well, we've, we've got this on a previous video, like, that your title of your video should be our favorite games, not the best. Well, I, I think it's implied that when we say the best, you know, top five games of 2017, that yeah. it's, it's our opinion, right? Like right, There's right. no metric by which, yeah. I guess <laughs> if you go, okay, top five 27 games of 2017, according to Metacritic, maybe. Oh, like, sure, yeah, then know. it would just be, yeah, well, that's kind of boring. But like right? you said, it's, it's like, always going to be subjective. Yeah. Uh, there's probably going to be games on either of our lists that you definitely disagree with sure. uh, probably a lot that you haven't played there's gonna be definitely ones that we just mentioned that we we haven't played so we can't put them on our list yeah right? yeah so. and i love this time of year though because you get to you know see what everyone's 
favorites were. Yeah. And it can look quite a bit different from you. There's a lot of overlap because it's like a lot of times it'll be like those big games too. Yeah. Um, but you know some. I think there's three in there. Yeah. yeah. I think there's three games yeah. that are gonna be on pretty much everyone's list. Yeah. For a top five, it'd be hard to not put these three games on there. Right. So uh, you're thinking Zelda, Mario Odyssey, Horizon Zero Dawn. Yes. Yeah. Like I sure. think it's hard to leave those off. You know, a top ten list for sure, but even like a top five, it's tough to leave those three out. Yeah, well, I mean, everyone has their you know own own opinions. Or I own, could see yeah. how somebody might leave one of those out of their top five, but you would assume that most people would have at least two of the three in the top five. For sure, yeah. But anyway, all right. Uh, so number five uh, for my favorite games of 2017 was Assassin's Creed Origins. Okay. Yeah. Now this one could also be probably my biggest surprise of the year because yes. I had. No expectations of this game. Yeah. I was done with the Assassin's Creed franchise. You know, I hadn't really seriously played one since, I think, 3? Yeah. And I which, think that's Which common. I actually liked, honestly. Like, I actually liked that game quite a bit. Like, I liked the setting. It was the American Revolution one. Okay. So yeah. The, but that was the one that got really, like... So 4 was Black Flag? Yes. Okay. That's the um, one that I played the most I played of. quite a bit of it. Um, didn't really get into it. Because I, I was... I, by that point, I was... I'm really just sick of the um, overarching like Assassin's Creed story, like the modern day thing that yes. keeps coming in and interrupting everything. Yeah. It's like, I'm just, I just play these games to like get lost in a historical setting and all that. And that kind of takes yeah. you out from it. And that's how I felt. I just started Assassin's Creed Origins okay. and I thought about putting it in my top five, but I just felt like I hadn't played enough to do that. Yeah. So you're only, if you're, you, you really got to put that time in. I think I'm three places. hours yeah. in and I'm just really starting to get into the combat system we talked about yeah. is, uh, is fantastic, but it takes a little bit of time. It's, it's one of those games that just gets better and better as yeah. you go, I find. Um, yeah, so this game, like, just so surprised me. Like, I love the Egyptian setting. Yes. Even that, before it started, I was like, oh, yeah, ancient Egypt's cool, but, like, I don't know. Like, is that really going to work? And, How like, are they going to pull it yes, off? Yeah. it totally works. Like, I mean, the game world they've built, like, I mean, even you've probably seen from your limited time, it's like, you look at the map, you're like, what the hell? Yeah. There's still places I haven't been to yet, but I, I've covered a huge... Um, portion of the map so far. This is probably one of the games I've spent the most amount of time. I'm still in the first little Siwa oh, area. Oh, Siwa, yeah. But I decided that I kind of wanted to do almost everything in that area to okay. kind of almost... Because it's, it's, essentially it's a tutorial area. Yeah, yeah. And I've kind of been going around doing every little thing in there because I think that'll give me a good feel of like what to expect once can the I, map opens up. Can I make up. a recommendation? Yes. Leave Siwa. Leave Siwa. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's kind of like, you remember with, um, I think it was... Dragon Age Inquisition. Yes. Did you play that? It was yes. like it was like leave the hinterlands or whatever. Can, yeah, yes. yeah, as soon as you can. Oh man, that game was great. One I never finished again because yeah. these open world games are so hard. But Assassin's Creed Origins, I did finish the story mode. Um again, it starts out kinda like well, I mean you've seen, like, um the story kind of doesn't make much sense at the beginning. It kind of just drops you in. Yes. A bunch of things are happening. You're like, yeah. wait, what happened There's here? some people that you need, yeah. that you need to kill. And, yeah, uh, and you're like, why? Yeah. Like, yeah, so they start to kind of explain that more through, like, flashbacks. Okay. Um, it ends up becoming, like, just a great, like, almost, like, relationship drama, too. Like, between Bayek and his wife, like, um, Ava, who you probably haven't even no, haven't. met yet. Nope. Um, but just because of, like, um, they're, like you know, shared grief over something that happened in their past. Yep. And they're both kind of on these like diverging paths that are still kind of together. Like they're both these badass like assassins. And yeah. and it's it's true to the name, like Origins, you do I mean, maybe slight spoiler alert here, it's kinda of like you see how the um assassins order forms. Okay. And they actually do like a pretty good job of like it making sense. But also it's against the backdrop of like, you know, it's like Julius Caesar and um uh, Cleopatra and all this stuff that go, that's happening. So if you were to actually just get into the Assassin's Creed series now... You could kind of start, yeah. yeah because, potentially. Because you don't even need to... Like, I felt like... Because I've skipped um, a bunch of Assassin's Creed games now. I uh -huh. didn't feel, like, lost or anything. Like, the, the modern day stuff, it, it takes up such a small portion. Like, here and there, yes. you'll pop out for, like, five minutes... Yep. And then you're just back in. Yeah. And it really doesn't matter that much. It's like I didn't feel like lost. Like what the heck's going on with the Templars these days? Who cares? It's like, no, it's just focused on um, Bayek's story. Yeah. Yeah. You've really gotten me excited to get yeah. back. And I, I really so want to play like more. There's so much extra it stuff in it too. And then like I love the, the upgrading system. Yeah, the loot system like the, seems really yeah, good. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, um, and and yeah. clean. 
it seems like like uh, it, it didn't take me too long to get used to like you know how how, how to tell uh, is this is this weapon better than this one? It, it seemed pretty right. easy yeah, to do. Yep. The upgrade tree seemed pretty straightforward. I just upgraded to the the bow where you can guide the arrow, which is a lot of fun. I never even I haven't even unlocked that ability yet. Oh man! I find I don't it's use like bows a lot in that I, game. Okay, I'm, see that? Oh, okay. I mentioned this before. Right. I love bows okay, in okay. video games. Yeah. I don't know why. Uh, like Tomb Raider, loved yeah. it. Um, in Horizon Zero Dawn, I'm all about the bow. Yeah. I like I like the range attack, and I take out a few guys, and then and then go in kind of yeah. thing. And same thing with Far Cry, I do the same thing. Okay, I think it's because I found it not as um, intuitive as games like Horizon or even You're right. like Zelda. It's not as good of the bow uh, no. system for so, sure. So. But, and then I just got so used to the melee combat and I had such good melee weapons. Yeah. I was just like, all right, I'm just going like, to get in. in there and just, yeah. Or I'd spend a lot of time, like, I'm always sneaking around and assassinating people. Good way to, you know, weed out everything. I'm starting to get better at that. That's something yeah. you really have to learn, not having played the game previously, other than Black Flag a little bit years ago. Yeah. Um... It's the it's the sneaking and uh, platforming without being seen that I really need to get used to. Oh, okay. Like knowing where guys are, I don't know always know because I know you can send up. Uh, what's that, the bird's name? Yeah. Uh, oh. No, I, I can't. I can't. But you send no. the bird up, and I think it can mark where the enemies Senu. are. Send you. Send you. Right. Yeah. And the, can it mark where the? I haven't figured that dynamic yeah, out yet. Yeah. Yeah. Marks where all the enemies okay, are. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I need to figure that out so I yeah. can then tell where the guys are before they see me, kind of thing. Well, what's cool is that um, you know the. Um, you know, like the towers or the waypoints that yes. you always do, like those viewpoints, it actually benefits you to do them because you not only fast get, travel, you not right? only, well, fast travel, you get XP from it, like a okay. little bit, but it also increases um, Senu's ability to track, like it's like oh, his range interesting. Okay. increases. So my guy, he can like spot guys from like miles away oh, now. Cool. It's crazy. But So, I mean, hats off to Ubisoft for I, yeah, you revitalizing know what? I can't, this series. I can't believe they had a great year this year. And yes. um, it's... You know, it, it really is like a testament, I think, to that team there, like Ubisoft Montreal and everything, that they took the time to be like, okay, people are getting sick of these games. We really need to go back to the drawing board and figure out, like, you know, how to make this fun again. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to see this series... I don't want to say make yeah, kind of make a comeback, right? Because yeah, people I were think... like, let's let this series go away for a while, and oh, they yeah. just came back so strong with this game. Yeah. It's like, I, I it makes me really happy and to see. see I hope happen. I hope they don't have a new game this year. I hope they do another like take two years. Yep. You know, I I hope there's like actually a cool like DLC chapter for this game because I would you know heartbeat right back to that. it. Yep. So number five on my yes. list is uh, Steamroll Dig Two. Oh, okay. This, surprisingly, I don't know how many... I think this game will make some people's top tens, and maybe even some people's top fives. This is kind was of a, no, a Dark Horse one. Well, yeah, like, this was know. like a no-brainer to me, though. Like, okay. Uh, this is one of the few games um, that, like, I feel like I could go play again all the way through right now. It took me... It takes about, I think, 10 to 15 hours, depend on, depending on how in-depth you go with uh, finding secrets and stuff like that and collecting all yeah. the, the little collectibles in the game. But, um, I, I like, I... As I talk right now, I'm just like, man, I'd really like to play this game again. <laughs> yeah. And that really hey, happens guys. with me because <laughs> yeah. because uh, there's just so much for, so much. for, me, to, yeah. for me to play. But um, yeah, SteamWorld uh, Dig 2, uh, it's a steampunk western. You're like mining for resources. Uh, some really clever puzzles. Uh, fantastic platforming. Uh, weapon upgrades are, are really fun. You can kind of really suit your play style right. to, uh, to to what to, to how you play uh, through through the upgrades. So you can upgrade certain things that you uh, use throughout the game. Uh, gorgeous graphics, uh, really great soundtrack. Um, I think it's like fifteen to twenty bucks. I know it's a little bit more on the Switch. It's like a Switch tax premium. It was yeah. recently on sale over the break. I so know it probably isn't anymore, and I didn't pick it up. And I was but, going to because you. I mean, you so can recommending this. I'm one pretty sure so you can much. pick this up on the PS4 for like ten bucks. Yeah, but I kind of want it on the Switch. I know it's really yeah. nice on the Switch. Really love, and that actually yeah. probably factored in a little. Quite a bit to it getting up into my top five sure. is being able to play this on the go. Yeah. Well, you um you picked this one up when you were on vacation, right? It was <laughs> the best vacation game. Like, yeah. <laughs> I would like sneak away from my family, just disappear, <laughs> lock the door in the room, and I'd just sit there yeah, for an yeah. hour, throw on my headphones, and play a little bit of this game. It's a great game that you can like, play in, in chunks too. So, um, yeah, I just uh, trying to think of what else I can say about the game. Yeah, beautiful art fantastic platforming um not super like in-depth story but still compelling enough to get you through the you know 12 hour campaign yeah and um 
yeah, fantastic. There's uh, a couple of these games. So SteamWorld Dig, the first one came out with uh, procedurally generated levels. Yeah. They scrapped that in this one for more like crafted. I, I like well, this. Yeah. Makes I way, it, it, it's much idea. better. Yeah. And then there's also SteamWorld Heist, which I've never played. Never heard of that. That's coming out on the Switch uh, very soon. Okay. So I'm going to pick that up because I've heard it's it's great. Um, so yeah, number five yeah. on my list is SteamWorld Dig 2. Top five, man. That's impressive. I I'm, gonna, it was I'm really, going home and downloading this. It was really like, a no-brainer. I, I highly yeah. recommend you guys play this game. Um, you know, give it a good chance, and I, I think you'll agree that it's it's a really, really good game. I wrote the review. on It's on yeah. Goliath.com. You guys can check out my full review there if you want to uh, see more in-depth about uh, SteamWorld Dig 2. So, cool. Nick, what's number four on your list? Okay, number four is a game that I expect will be higher on your list. Because I think it's there and higher on a lot of people's lists, um, but it's Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. Um, so, yeah, like I said before, I, you know, it took me a while to really get into this. Um, I've only really been playing like a huge chunk of it over like the last like two weeks or so. Yeah. Um, and I'm loving it more as I go. Yeah. Um, so that's why it's not quite like I could see it like maybe once I'm you know all said and done it could Bumping you know it, would, it may, may have bumped yeah. up a bit but. Um, the problem is I have I have some kind of like kind of significant nitpicks with it that kind of hold it back. Um, I I hate how it's like if if it's raining in the game you basically can't do anything. Um, you know it's like I'm like out in a lightning storm and I just get like destroyed by stuff. I know it's yeah. like okay it's like metal and you have to like but I'm like why do I have to go then and just like equip a whole bunch of different stuff and do this? Yeah. And, you know but. It is, I mean, it's relatively minor, I guess, and I, I'm not a big fan of the stamina meter. Um, I thought that these were things that, like, Nintendo might address, the whole rain thing. You can make the rain time a little shorter, so it's less yeah. annoying, but they never did. Yeah, it was like, I was just, like, hiding under a rock for a bit, because yeah. I'm like, oh, man, I don't want to get destroyed out there, like, yeah. and it's like, you were, like, kind of just waiting around for a sunny day, and, I mean, it's, it's like, I can appreciate that kind of attention to detail, but it's yeah. like, when it kind of gets in the way of your enjoyment, it kind of sucks. But, I mean, there's so much to enjoy about this game. It's just ridiculous. They really are minor like, gripes when you think about it. Really, it, right? like, really it's... are. Like, I'm so addicted. Like, I mean, I love, like, that they, you know, just really just blew up Zelda. And we're just like, this is just going to be the, the open world game to end all open world games. Yeah. And it's just, it's like, I love that you can, like, anything you think of doing, it's probably going to work, yes. right? It's yeah. just like... Oh man, I need to get across here. Well, if I chop down this tree, it's gonna go like that and do this. And it's like there's no like one set way to do anything. Yep. Like even in the shrine puzzles, you would think, okay, well, there's like only one way to do this. But I found it's like sometimes you can just like hack your way through. It's just like there's ones where you're um, using kind of the the tilt controls. You know, yeah. like I play with the pro controller. I've actually been playing quite a bit of this game um, on the TV. Okay. Just just because like um, as as great as it is in handheld mode, it's like the the Joy-Con joysticks yeah. aren't the greatest for a game that re requires we talked about a lot of precision. Odyssey too. Sure, like, yeah, any of these third-person games, yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, the tilt controls, it's like, you know, you can kind of hack it. There was one puzzle where I, like, flipped it over or something, yes. and it, like, just, and it was like, do 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 yeah. and I'm like, oh, okay, because <laughs> <laughs> I got past that, and, um... Yeah, like, that's so addicting. Well, the whole like, shrine just, system oh. in general, like, the, the puzzles are fantastic. I really appreciate yeah. when they can create puzzles that are challenging, but rarely frustrating. Yeah. And that's a hard thing to do. Yeah, and I think they did a great job of um, creating this kind of interesting story, actually. Like, it's 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 not really in your face, and it's kind of like, it's there if you want to seek it out. Like, you're, you're going and finding, like, Link's memories. Yes. And that's, like, filling in the gaps, and so yep. I'm, like, you know, like, super into doing that. Um, man, I feel like I'm doing, like, a terrible job of, like, covering, like, why this game is so great. There's but just I mean, so many things. It's, like, it, yeah. Uh, first off, it's not, it's not really, like, it's not even really a traditional Zelda game. It, it's no. more comparable to, like, a, a Fallout or a Skyrim or a Elder Scrolls type, I, I mean, in terms of being an open world. Yeah. It's the first time we've seen Zelda in a real, truly open world setting. Right. I mean, we've had kind of, you know, open environments before. I mean, the uh, Ocarina of Time was so, you know, groundbreaking because of that, like, you know, Hyrule field, right? You come out there and you're like, wow, I can go off in this direction and do that. But it's like, it's it's basically like a little hub world, right? It's yes. like, this is like, yeah, truly open. It's yeah. just, um, 
And it, it takes a lot of, you know, it borrows ideas from other open world games, but it like just does it in such a unique way. Like even like the towers are like a, a puzzle themselves, right? Yeah, it borrows the best yeah. bits from a lot of different yes. games and puts them all together in this fantastic package. Yeah. Um, even like, you know, it takes like, you know, with uh, Far Cry with like liberating outposts and stuff. There's a little bit of that here mm -hmm. with, uh, I think all the like camps or where, where the, you know, when there's a bunch of enemies oh, yeah. and you yeah. kind of thin out the herd and you go and you that. take it over then the, yeah. I think the chest shows up after they've all been yeah but it's even more impressive that it's such a huge open world but there's like just stuff to do everywhere yeah you know like there's all those korok seeds just hiding yeah out everywhere like a uh, thousand, something, thousand something ridiculous something? Yeah. i don't even know i'm just like discovering them you know here as and you there go, right? as you go right yeah. and um just it's like no other game really you know has a sense of like discovery and exploration like it really just feels like the you know realization of the kind of like original idea behind the legend of zelda Absolutely. in the first place right it's yeah. just this you know adventuring yeah yeah that's exactly what it is i mean yeah. i just i would just go for a walk or just head one direction and before you know it you stumbled across something cool every time right yeah and it, it makes me wonder it's like are zelda games gonna be like this from now on like this like kind of open world thing um man i don't know but like i just know i just want to keep playing it yeah yeah what a, what a fantastic game uh anyway. moving on to number four on my list <laughs> yes. uh, uh number four on my list is pers i forgot we have some visual oh, representations yes. here um i have okay, some of the games it's uh persona 5 on the ps4 do you have any experience with the persona I games do at not, all no now the persona games are, are pretty niche titles um, yeah that's why i was pretty happy to see persona 5 showing up on a lot of uh top 10s top fives it was nominated for game of the year through yeah. uh, the vga awards well, so i think among like you know like game critics and people who are very into games it's like the persona series is held in high regard like yeah persona 4 <laughs> golden i know it's like it's one of those games it's like best game for vita you need to play it yeah. whatever and i never that was really the first it. time that it, it kind of started to hit mainstream yeah. Yeah. and and more so when it hit the vita with golden like you said because it had come out on the ps2 previously right um i'm just so happy to see that this is getting some recognition it's a very japanese rpg so it's not for everybody yeah. um I mean, if you haven't played many RPGs, I don't know, even know if I would recommend it to like the average person okay. just to be like, oh, you got to play this game. Like, I, I don't, it's not for everybody. No. But no. Uh, it's, it's, I, I love this series. I, uh, I played through Persona 3. I actually used to play Persona 3 on my, on my PSP Go at work okay. when I could find a few minutes here and there. Yeah. I'd flip that little Go yeah. screen up and play through some Persona 3. So I beat that one. So Persona 4 Golden is where I, I played most of Persona 4. And that's the one that really got some notoriety for the Persona series, I feel like. it's. I mean, Persona series started back on the PS1. But uh, with Persona 4 Golden, it really started to hit mainstream just because there wasn't a whole lot at the time to play on the Vita. So I think a lot of people were kind of starving for content and picked it up who normally wouldn't pick it up, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, but Persona 5, uh, such a fantastic game. Really, like, definitely the pinnacle of the series, in my opinion. Um, kind of been refining it over years and, and just a, developed this fantastic game that is part... Uh, you spend your day... It's, it's like a... Almost like a high school simulator. It's like a lot of time management stuff. So you're developing <laughs> relationships with other students. Yeah. Which can help you upgrade certain uh, abilities in the game. Um, it's very Japanese. <laughs> and this game always sounds so weird to me from like the outside. It is weird. But, like, it, yeah, no, it's yeah, very, it, guess, it's yeah. very weird. It, it's very Japanese yeah. and very different. Uh, which I love that. I, I love everything Japan. It takes place <laughs> in Japan and Tokyo and like the Shibuya district. So you can actually see like real world locations and you can see online, like they, there's actually pictures of the in-game versus like the real oh, world cool. location. Yeah. So you can find the ramen, a, a, a random ramen store, like ramen restaurant in a back alley in Tokyo. Yeah. That's actually what it looks like in real life. Wow. And that, that to me is super cool. That's cool. Uh, partially because I've always had this fascination with Japan. And I really want to go there. Um, so that stuff is absolutely fantastic. Um, really like I would describe the combat system. It's turn-based combat. A lot like Pokemon, so you're trying okay. to collect these personas, um, which are like, uh, you know, creatures, ghosts, animals type things. Not necessarily animals, more like creatures and ghosts. Okay. Um, and you're trying to kind of add them to your arsenal of uh, personas that you can use and battle with. 
Um, wow, that actually explains it much better than like anything I've heard about this game before because I had no clue what the persona was even so referring to. Half the game is yeah. time management, so you need to figure out how to spend your day like at school. So yeah. you know you can get a job and make money, or you can spend that time developing a relationship with a friend. Um, I mean, it's just like you're doing this button press. Do you want to you know do you want to spend time with your friend and develop this relationship? Button press. You know, it shows you. Sometimes there's like tests in class that you have to take and answer correctly, and then you'll get bonuses. So it's it's quick, right? But it really yeah. just leads up to the nighttime part, which is like you know, kind of like a witching hour type thing, where you head into these ridiculous um, dungeon areas that are really well designed, just really quirky and strange, okay. um, really well done. And then that's where you spend most of the meat of the game is in these dungeons where you uh, do these turn-based battles and fantastic. I mean, the art style in this game is absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's just, it's a fantastic game and um, it's a no-brainer for me to be on my list at uh, number four. Very cool. So Nick, what's your fourth? Are we on four? We're on, for we're on three we're now. We're on three for All you, right. sorry. Yeah, so third, uh, so coming in at number three, for favorite games of 2017 is Cuphead. Oh yeah. Um, so and I, I didn't just include this to actually represent the Xbox One on yeah. here, although it is also available on PC. Um, this game, like, like from a pure like aesthetic point of view, oh, like yeah. I'm, I can't really think of a more beautiful game to come out in 2017. Like just the, you know, the hand drawn art style, um, just the in the audio too like oh, it's the just music like they, they, they have like the yeah exactly they came in like making like it's like kind of like barbershop quartet kind yep. of so, uh songs and, and that um, cartoon style from yeah, cartoons it, 30s, yeah 40s, it's like a, yeah it's like kind of like a third and all, style. The, all the characters yeah, are like, always whoop, moving whoop, and stuff yeah the yeah music. It's like, oh it's whiz, just yeah. so charming yeah um but like and then you get to the, the actual gameplay and it's like it's so like just so tightly designed yeah. just the um just such a fun like 2d running gun shooter yeah but you know it's in, encased in these levels that are so difficult but in like such a fair way yes right like it, it is a actually very balanced game where it's yep. like it's through repetition that you you'll get better and you'll eventually conquer everything because each level is only supposed to take you about like two minutes right it's like having like kind of like a perfect run um but you're going to spend probably hours yes. on each, like... Um, the first level that I tried yeah. uh, was one of the uh, platforming ones. Because so, you can start at different levels, from what I remember. Yeah, yeah, you kind of have your pick of so different ones. So the yeah. first one I started, yeah. it literally took me 20 tries. Yeah. Minimum, maybe more like 30, to actually finally figure out the patterns and get through that first level. Yeah. No, I will say, I mean, so it's... There's three different kinds of levels you can get into. There's like the run and gun ones where it is kind of like this platforming level. There's little like enemies. Mega and stuff. Man, uh, yeah. Contra type feel. Very much so. Um, then there's the kind of like flight uh, levels where you're kind of you, Cuphead and his brother Mugman, two main characters. You, well, that's if you're playing in co op, which yeah. I basically exclusively did in this game. And I've heard that that's a better way to play it, to, to be honest. I think so. Like, I mean, I, I think it would be. I haven't even played it actually in single player. I've heard yet. it's easier it's, too. Crazy, like it but helps to have. Yeah. That it, oh person. man, having another guy there um, just helps so much. Um, so that would be like a, a sh like they call that like a shoot 'em up or a shmup type level. With yeah. The, with the. Oh know, yeah, with the with the planes. Yeah, I I love these kind of levels. Yeah, where you're um, so you have some like different abilities and stuff. You can make like your plane like smaller to fit through like tight spaces yeah. and stuff because you'll be. You know, not only dodging, like, environmental hazards, but, you know, you're facing, like, a boss, too. Yeah. Um, so those levels are great, but my favorites are just the standard kind of boss levels. Yes. Where you're just, you know, you're on foot and you're just fighting them. Like, I kind of wish the whole game was just a bunch of boss battles. I'm not as big a fan of the running gun levels, but I'm glad they're there. Like, it yeah. helps kind it, of hide it out. And, yeah, it makes it um, varied. Yeah. Still actually haven't finished this game, uh, but I'm looking forward to getting back to it. But, like... Um, I'm, like, I'm, I'm not usually, like, actually a big fan of, like, the, you know, kind of super difficult games like this, but um, Cuphead really makes me think that, like, man, maybe I should go back and, like, play some of the old Mega Man games and really even get into, like, Dark Souls or something like that because I do really love trial and error games. Like, I know these aren't, you know, everyone's cup of tea. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm a retro gamer, so th this type of game is... This is the kind, kind of, of right and, yeah. yeah, this is the kind yeah. of trial and error that I do like. I'm not a yeah. huge Dark Souls type person. Okay. Um, but yeah, this would be like comparable to more, you know, the Mega Man type games. I'm trying to think. Yeah. There's been a couple other games. Um, Axiom Verge. It's not super hard, yeah. but like it's kind of a throwback to uh, uh, Metroid. Yeah. There's a lot of great uh, kind of remakes of not remakes, but like new takes on I the think, old formulas. I, I think it's very like it's like it's kind of like an underrated um, way to design games, just because. It takes so much thought, I think, to to make a game that is very difficult, but do so in a way where it's not, like, Cheap. really super frustrating you. Yeah. Because they put in a lot of systems that really um, kind of help, help you want to keep going, right? Like, the low times are, like, you know, almost non-existent, so you yeah, just keep right going back, back in. right? You're yeah. right back in. You can customize the controls. Like, I feel like the, the default controls were, like, terrible, so I was like, no, I need the guns on the triggers. And it just made a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, but yeah, like Cuphead, definitely in my top five. It's a um, game I'm going to keep coming back to, I think. Yeah, just missed my top five uh, only because I haven't played a whole lot of it. Yeah. I'm almost waiting for like... A buddy of mine to come over and play it co-op with just because i've heard it's oh yeah it's and more fun with it's weird to say that this is like the probably the best xbox one game of the year yeah but it's also um like it's it looks like it's almost like a budget title but like like no it i couldn't believe that this game was only like 30 or 40 bucks yeah handcrafted levels yeah. uh really it feels like it gets people it hooks you in with like the art style and the music like i feel like a lot yes. of people who typically don't play these kind of hard games were brought into this game just because it's so gorgeous and like you just watch that opening they have like a little preview if you select the game in the store yeah the little preview with the sound and like the, the the little trailer that runs in the xbox store to this game is like the greatest hook ever i saw that i'm like i'm yeah. in yeah bye. oh definitely <laughs> yeah it's like i knew nothing about this game and then you just see like oh yeah, yeah the trailer you're like yep playing yeah. that gorgeous game um really easily one of the one of the best games of 2017 um moving into my third game on my top five, it's uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Mm. Now, we have already discussed this because it was Nick's number Yeah, sorry, four I got game. <laughs> and kept going on about it there. Um, yeah, it was number four. Yeah, so, I mean, not a whole lot else to say about it. Um, like I said, I put, I think, 55 hours into it. Um, I'm actually considering going back and going to do a bunch of stuff like uh, look for more Korok seeds, finish more shrines. And, Did you beat uh, Ganon? Yes. Okay, you did. Okay. I did. Hmm. So, but uh, I have a save point because I think you can save point just outside of the castle. So I'm sitting there. So I've technically completed the game. There's no, there's no game plus, which was an annoyance for me. Kind of interesting. So yeah. after you beat Ganon, you can't go back and do stuff. Okay. You know what I mean? Did they add this into the DLC at all? I hope so. I don't know. I they can't might remember have. everything they've added. Because but... that was one thing I finished the game and I was like, because I assumed that I could finish it and then go back and then finish other stuff. But that wasn't the case, so you have to have at least a, a point that I finished it. I've got to go back to my save file, go do a bunch more stuff, and then beat Ganon again, uh, basically. So okay. uh, I plan on doing that, and then maybe moving into uh, some of the DLC stuff. Do you know much about the DLC? The first DLC pack? Yeah, all I really knew was that it um, will like track your yeah, progress where you've or whatever. Been yeah, where you Yeah, but it, 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 doesn't it add another area? I don't know about area, but there's like different modes and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. And then I know the second one adds a motorcycle. Yeah, that's about all I know things, about it. So. Yeah. I've kind of just been like, you know, staying kind of uh, oh, ignorant yeah. of the DLC stuff just because I'm like, oh, I'm going to play through the There's the so much to game get to, and then right? get to that. But. So, yeah, number three on my list is Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Um, I mean, you could interchange for me. Uh, it was top, hard. Yeah. My top three was really hard to uh, pick which order, but uh, yeah. So, yeah, Zelda landed at number three for me. Okay. Nick, what is number two on your list? All right. Um, I feel like we we might have the same number two. We don't. We Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, all right, so my... I think we have the same two and one. Oh, okay, but they're in different order. Okay, oh, so... No, this is interesting. Okay, so let's just... Uh, okay. You know, you, you say what it is, and then I'll tell you. All right, so my number two is Super Mario Odyssey. Okay, so it's my number one. Okay. Uh, that's my number one game All right. 2017. All right, so we're getting better. Okay, so we'll just have a little discussion here about it, I guess. So, yeah, Super Mario Odyssey is probably my favorite Switch game so far. Um, I like it even more than Breath of the Wild. I mean, they're two completely different games. Like, it's, you know, kind of hard to compare. But um, this is, you know, up there for my favorite kind of Mario 
game. Like it ever. is. My favorite. I don't know. And yeah, I can't say for sure yet. I don't know. Like it's still a game. It's nice. I just keep coming back to to um, you know, get more get more moons and yep. everything. But um, just what a like. It just much in the same way as Breath of the Wild. Like just this game is just overflowing with creativity, just from top to bottom. Like they yeah. really just threw every crazy idea they could think of at the at the wall and see what stuck and you know a lot of it does i mean um you know the whole game is based around this just such addicting capture mechanic you know with the hat like it's just like who would have thought mario's hat would be this like such a versatile like item that you could build an entire game around yeah. like you know it not only captures you know a bunch of different um kind of like enemies and creatures in the game and then you get to kind of inhabit their body and do different uh, powers and moves. Um, but, like, you can use the hat as this, like, you know, thing to help you in, like, the platforming section. Yep. Like, you can hop on it, do, like, jumps off of it. And, I mean, there's such amazing um, videos online of people, like, doing these, like, Crazy <laughs> incredible moves. jumps. I'm like, I don't even know how I would no. start doing that, but whatever. Um, there's just so much to respect in this game. Like, each world is just... Um, I feel like a lot of that is just, you know, getting through the game and just seeing what's next. Like, you're just, like, you want to stay in, like, a particular world, but you're like, no, I want to see, like, what what's what's the next one going to yeah. be? Um, How are they going to top the Luncheon yeah. Kingdom? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Luncheon Kingdom. What, was, they... your, what was your favorite one, you think? I, I'm, it's been a while now. Um, I'm trying to remember the different worlds. I remember enjoying the Luncheon Kingdom, mostly because at first I was like, this is really weird. Yeah. But then just, like, kind of... You know, falling in love with the uh, how strange it was fighting that big bird in a oh, bowl man. of soup. And... Okay, that that boss battle really annoyed me, but whatever. Well, um, it's yeah. interesting because for some people, that was a boss battle that yeah. I got through relatively quickly, and I yeah. thought that the, some of the bosses were a little bit easy at times. Yeah. Um, you know, like, but it, it, it felt like a little bit uneven because, like, you know, the 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 boss in the second world, I may have had an issue beating, but in the fifth world, I breezed right past. But I think that just kind of came down to how fast you figured out the mechanic and oh, what sure. they were trying to get you to do. Yep. And I think with that bird one, I, I kind of realized that, yeah, you have to kind of, what was it? I think run up the... Well, you're in that, was, like, you're in that, like, bowl of soup and or she was something. Eventually, and eventually, was she spits, spitting it? Yeah, yeah and you, you have, have to, to kind of run up, up it. it and, yeah. Yeah. So, um, that's the part that gave me a lot of trouble. I, no, I, I could totally see but, that. But, um... I think, yeah, I think New Donk City was probably oh, my yeah, favorite. I mean, City. that was the totally one that was featured that. so much in the, um, you know, kind of advertising for it. But I just, uh, I really dug this whole, like, Mario there with, like, like real people and stuff. And it was, like, this weird, like, kind of, like, almost, like, jazz aesthetic and stuff. Yes. Like, everyone's, like, you know, wearing, like, uh, fedoras and stuff. And yeah. like, everyone's in, like, business suits. Yeah. It's so weird. And then, I mean, it also features, like, probably the best um, kind of, gameplay section i think is like when you beat that level and that song comes on and you're doing the kind of like 2d platform yeah that's like a special that, event that's that you, so amazing you have to agree yeah. to do that special event i think or you'll miss it really yeah because there's oh. a i think you collect all the musicians remember that yeah and then she has like a little party and there's like a special event and you have to do you have to collect them all i think basically my point is there's a way that you can miss that so oh, that there's a special a event in new yeah. donk city that you need to do I yeah, mean, we, we won't spoil it here. I mean, it's been long enough that we could spoil it. But, yeah, but um, I mean, I, man, it, oh, it's so hard to talk about. Like, there's so many things in this game. Like the, I love collecting the costumes. Oh yeah. Um, just like the fact that Even the like, little stickers and, to put on the outside yeah. of your uh, Odyssey, and, your whoa, ship. Like weird concept. It's all in-game currency. Like, you know, you're not having to like pay <laughs> extra. Rates. It's like you buy the game. There you go. You get the whole thing. Um, you know, Nintendo still proving, you know, that they know how to craft just oh. like an, just such an engaging single player experience. I mentioned that in the review, you know, like 30 plus years of the Mario franchise and they're still able to come up with like fresh and new concepts. Yeah. It's, it's just really yeah. amazing like and a testament to like some of the greatest game design ever. Yeah. And it really just feels like a, like a spiritual successor to Super Mario 64. Absolutely. Which is very cool. Um, so yeah, Super Mario Odyssey is my number two favorite game of the year, but it could have also one? been easily number one. Okay. So my number two and your number Which one, I believe. Which is also my number one, yeah. Is uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Ah. Now for me, you've played much more of this than I have. I think I put 20 hours in. Um, I think you yeah. played I did the full... like everything. And then yeah. the DLC too, right? <laughs> um, I haven't actually beat the DLC okay. yet, but... 
Yeah, Horizon Zero Dawn. So, like, this is crazy that, like, 2017 really was, like, a year of, like, open world games. But really pushing open world design forward, yeah. I think. Yeah, good point. And I think, in some ways, Horizon Zero Dawn, like, it doesn't really innovate all that much in terms of, like... Like, I think Breath of the Wild definitely does a lot more, like, I guess, like innovative stuff with yeah. open world game design. Kind of refines it, maybe? Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it is more just, like, open, really. Like, just with the whole, like, climbing mechanic. It's like Horizon, you can only, you know, climb at certain places, yeah. like, where it's like, oh, here's the yellow handholds and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but, like, it does everything so well. Um, the side missions all feel so, like, like well designed, like mm -hmm. just you know, they put like real thought into it. Each one is this kind of own separate story um, that you feel like you want to see through. Um, such a like amazing protagonist in like, yes. Aloy and a female uh, protagonist, a female, again, yeah, yeah, which is um, great to see. Yeah, and just like her story is just like I don't know, like so captivating and really. I love the mix of um, that. It's like this kind of like tribal game but mixed with like these sci-fi elements like yeah. it becomes more apparent as you go on it's like oh there's way more to this story than i thought yeah um i can't think of another game where i've been so interested in like the um the little like journals you pick up and like okay. little audio logs and stuff because the I one that i always think about that is bioshock yes that's the only okay, one that yeah. i really care yeah. about the audio logs and the backstory because that's a yeah. great way and that's really from what i remember with audio logs at least that's kind of where it started with bioshock as being a good way to flesh out the universe, picking up those audio logs and just kind of listening to them while you're doing whatever. Yeah. It's a great way to do it. For sure. Um, the, the, the gameplay, like, I mean, it's like one of the most, I feel like satisfying, well, like kind of like bow and arrow games. Yes. There is. I mean, that might be a little nitpick is that I feel like there's no reason to use a lot of the other weapons because the yeah. bows are just so useful. Well, did you use the trip caster? Or okay, the I did that a caster? lot. I would always do the traps. Like, yeah. I, I, yeah. And, and hey, another kind of like, I guess, Bioshock parallel is that you really feel like if you're taking down one of the big beasts in this game, which, you know, are so like wonderfully designed. Oh, yeah. Especially when you get to like the big, huge guys and you're just like, how am I going to take down that thing? I mean, that really like, drives the quality of combat in this. Is the the varied and the interesting enemies in, in this game. Yes. Without um, that, I mean, the combat can be great, but if you don't yeah. have cool things to fight... Then... Some of the best, like, mounted controls, too, yes. I think I've ever had yeah. in one of these games. Like, you're, you're not riding horses, but they're, like, almost like, you know, kind of like horse-like machines mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And... You know, going to now I'm playing through Breath of the Wild. I'm like, man, these horse controls kind of suck yeah. compared to that. But um, and one of the most varied, like, kind of open worlds too, in terms of geography. Yep. Like at first you think, oh, is it's just these kind of like snowy mountain areas and whatever, and then you like keep going and you're like, oh no, there's like basically like every type of um, environment you can like think of, and it all just feels this like kind of cohesive world with like, you know different cities to discover and it, it really rewards kind of like um like deep play i think um but yeah so you're only you only put 20 hours yeah and it one. was when the game first came out because yeah. how did that work uh it came out just before just breath before of the wild. breath of the wild so it so, felt like you really had to pick your horse there yeah well i i played i really tried to i, I plowed through it. i couldn't put it down because it was such a fantastic game yeah um but then Zelda, or Breath of the Wild, came out, and I haven't turned it on since. Right. So I actually had to go back and do some reading and familiarize myself with the game again before I wanted to put it on, you know, this high on my list. Mm -hmm. But um, in my opinion, like, I, I can't think of a, a PS4 game that I like more than this. So um, Yeah, I think I, it might be my favorite game for the system. Like I, I rated, I think it was 2015, I rated uh, or, uh, uh, Tomb Raider... Um, which which Tomb oh Raider? Rise of the Tomb Raider Rise of the Tomb Raider as my top game of that year, yes, so incredible game. I I love the I love that style of game and anytime Me too. I can use a bow like I can in this game that always I love that kind of combat system. Um, I just wanted to touch like the dialogue in this game, absolutely fantastic. One of the best looking uh, PS4 games, if oh. not the best looking PS4 yes, game definitely on the fair. PS4 Pro and you know pseudo 4K is absolutely gorgeous and i remember them showing that i don't know if you saw it but they had an article where 
they would they would show you the system that they use where they would only render the world right where your character was actually looking and i think a lot of games use this yes. but it was just kind of interesting it was the first time that they that, kind of yeah, like you got that peek behind, behind the, closed doors yeah. or whatever right so um, i thought that was really interesting and, and kind of makes sense because like i there was many times where i would just stay on the edge of a cliff and just kind of yeah. scan the horizon it's like beautiful yeah <laughs> oh yeah. nice pun there but um <laughs> and it, it really just feels like the game where because this was made by gorilla who's done the kill zone games now I'm, I'm a fan of the kill zone series but yeah. they've never really i feel like gotten their due no but this is the game that really i think they've taken the next step into Absolutely. like top tier developer yep. i agree uh, and i can't wait to see what they do next yeah do you, has there been any talk of uh, a follow-up in, in the works i'm sure oh i think for sure they're going to come out with the second game but i mean that's years away yeah that. i mean considering the dlc was just released yeah so. All right, so that's Nick's number one and my number, number two, two game so for our top five of yeah. 2017. But I think we had very kind of similar thoughts, clearly, on our um, our, our top two. Yeah, yeah so just, yeah. for you, like, what, what games were just outside your top five? Um, let me see. Oh, well, like, for me, one? it was Cuphead, um, uh, oh. Mario Plus Rabbids. Yeah, okay, yeah, that would be my top ten for sure. Um, yeah. One I would put, yeah, it was that number six i think and it was kind of it really knocking on the door there is um uncharted the lost legacy yeah i think this might be one of my biggest surprises of the year is that a new uncharted game came out and it wasn't in my top five it's just kind of a um, testament to what kind of year it was oh for sure and that's not a a slight on that game i i love it i've heard that the that playing as two different characters in uncharted I've even heard people suggest that maybe that they should stay with those characters going forward for the Uncharted series. Yeah, this is what I was kind of thinking. Drake behind. Yeah, it was. It proved that you could have an Uncharted game without Drake, and I wasn't even really missing him that much, yeah. just because the dynamic between you know the two uh, female leads is just uh, it's so engaging, and um, just you know great environment, perfect length for an Uncharted game. Yeah, didn't really um, overstay its welcome. I felt like Uncharted Four was maybe a bit too long. Yep. Yeah. Uh, do you feel like they could maybe like potentially have this as a side series to the Uncharted, and maybe do like a every second you know have this story one year and an Uncharted the next yeah. and kind of offset them? I I think so. I think like there's really no limit to the amount of like different stories you could tell in the Uncharted universe, yeah. and I think um well oh, geez you haven't even finished Uncharted four, but no. the way that game ends it very much you know leaves the door open too for even like different kinds of stories too. So. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, for, um, another one that would have missed out, like I mentioned, is uh, Mario Plus Rabbids. I definitely considered putting that one in my top five. It was okay. a fantastic game. And when you mentioned what a good year that Ubisoft had, uh, you know, yeah, I that one, yeah, the, it's 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 a fantastic game. Um, kind of moving, transitioning into our surprises. That's also on my list for one of the biggest surprises of the year is Mario Plus Rabbids. Yeah, a game that when it was first announced. Um, we're basically laughing at it. It's well, like, really? It was, it was announced as a Mario and um, Rabbids crossover RPG type game. Mm -hmm. So people were like, oh, this is just going to be, you know, some crappy shovelware game. Yeah. Kind of in the vein of like a Mario, not that they're that crappy, but like the Mario at the Olympics games. Oh, sure. Stuff. Something you can kind of just ignore. Or right? Mario like, and Sonic. Yeah. yeah. Um, but when it was announced, I was at E3 when it was announced that um, it's going to be a turn-based like strategy game, yeah, which I'm a big for, fan yeah. of, like the XCOM series. Yeah, I was all in. Yeah. I was like, this looks awesome, and it somehow made uh, the rabbits characters relevant again. Yeah, I mean they still kind of annoy me in that game. I know? was surprised because they, they definitely bad. annoy me. They definitely yeah. do. Yeah, but in this game, I thought that they added. A nice amount of humor to you know the mario they i thought they played off each other pretty well yeah um and a surprisingly challenging game too oh yeah it starts to ramp up in difficulty like, yeah pretty quickly and like you have to kind of pay attention to like you know who you're bringing on your team absolutely you think through each move what abilities you're gonna have i really yeah. thought that and i wrote this in my review i really thought mm -hmm. that it did a great job of introducing uh new systems really well yeah. so it wasn't like overwhelming it slowly introduced things but uh the the difficulty from there on kind of really ramps up so it's it's yeah. not uh I, I have to give it credit for um kind of bringing this type of game into the mainstream like not a lot of people have played a game like XCOM or a game that I compared it to no, as um Shadow Wars on the original on the 3DS Tom yeah. Clancy's Shadow Wars um it was a launch game fantastic game actually the same team did this game um no but, way really yeah oh, it was a lot of the members cool. of the same team that that made this so 
um, which makes total sense. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I thought it was a, it was great because it kind of introduced this type of game to a more you know to the masses. This game sold very very well. well. For, yeah. For uh, considering it's you know I I don't know if some people got fooled into thinking it was a like a traditional Mario game. I know that somebody at the office was gonna buy it for her kids, and I was like, no, this yeah. is really not you know go buy Mario Kart, Mario Odyssey. This is yeah. not really a game that I, I can't I couldn't see a lot of like. 10 year olds wanting to play a turn based strategy yeah so much you know yeah. like they might they might think it's something else but um, yeah. like either way i give it credit for kind mm -hmm. of bringing it to the to the mainstream what other surprises um, were there for you this I, year i think that we kind of both uh, highlight this one but uh sonic mania yeah fantastic um, yeah like actually made me like sonic games again like yeah. <laughs> that's kind of amazing i feel like it came out of nowhere like and i think you were the one who recommended it to me too yeah. you're like are you checked out sonic mania i'm like what the heck is that and it's like basically like this kind of like was it was it a fan game yes. originally or something yeah and so then, they, yeah i think he did some some work on like a game of his own they brought him on to actually make this game yeah and it remixes a lot, like old levels from like uh you know sonic one two three. yeah it has a lot of like throwbacks to those levels yeah. and incorporates elements of that so there's a lot of like nostalgia for people who play it and mm -hmm. uh it's really like a, a return to form for sonic games we've got a lot of you know really bad 3d type sonic games and, and some not so good you know 2d style they tried to go back and do a sonic 4 remember they were supposed to do a bunch yeah. of episodes and they kind of yeah, scrapped kind it and of it wasn't stopped. very good so yeah. Uh, amazing that we got a a proper Sonic game that's actually really good. And again, yeah. I've been playing it on the Switch, and it's such a good console to be able oh, to play that sure. on. So, did you have another surprise? Yeah, one more surprise I just quickly wanted to mention okay. was um, Resident Evil Seven. Oh yeah. Um, after five and six, I wasn't a big fan. Uh, they went a little bit yeah. different direction here, and kind of went into like the more went back to the roots, kind of. Well, it's more survival horror, yeah. uh, more in the vein that we've seen in the last couple of years, like of like a, I don't know, Evil Within type game. Um, I guess I'm trying to say like less of like a, a shooter yeah, and more of like the survival horror type stuff. Um, I played it, uh, I remember I did a stream actually with my wife um, that was pretty fun because it's a pretty terrifying game. It's oh, uh, yeah. super dark and I know you can play it in VR too, which... I haven't had the like, chance to do. I don't even do. know yeah, if you want <laughs> like, to. I don't know if I... In VR, I can't, I can't watch it like this in VR. Yeah, exactly. so. No, no. <laughs> so I'll pass. But yeah, it just nice. again, it's nice to see the Resident Evil series, you know, come back to, you know, the quality of yeah. like a, a Resident Evil 4 was and, like... And to see Capcom like really take a chance with it. Yeah. And really just be like, you know what? It's really going to have nothing to do with like the characters you guys really like and all this stuff. It's just like this new story set in the Resident Evil universe. Like, cool. Yeah. yeah yeah so that was a surprising one what about disappointments for you this year um disappointments well i think we've covered this one quite a bit but like star wars battlefront 2 um a game that i'm actually liking a little more as i Coming play it just a bit. yeah i find like the multiplayer can be pretty fun yeah um well i think a lot of it had to do with you know seeing the last jedi and just kind of being high on star wars stuff yeah. and then getting in there and having that experience but i mean the whole like loot bait loot box you know controversy too really soured me on the game but then even just the game itself i'm kind of like wish they had you know made different decisions with things in the with the design um the campaign i felt like was kind of had cool moments but it felt kind of like trashy too in some ways like there were so many glitches i ran into oh really just yeah what like, did you play it on xbox interesting i didn't really notice I don't think I ran into any glitches. Yeah, some really weird ones. But, now, I, yeah. I enjoyed Battlefront. I thought yeah. it, it's a tough thing to pull off, that, that single-player campaign, and I thought they did a, a pretty good job of it. I enjoyed playing through it. It's tough to shoehorn all that Star Wars. Like They, they want to hit on you know having certain characters in it, and I felt that they found an interesting way to kind of incorporate as much as they could from this universe. Yeah. It wasn't an easy task. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed Battlefront. I still, I still think it's a good game. No, it's I know just, you like that one. It's yeah. really disappointing, you know, how things went down. And I honestly, I really feel sorry for, you know, I went to EA's Motive Studios in Montreal, who did the single player campaign, and like all the hard work that's been put on, you know, by, by these, you know, Criterion and all the the stuff they put in this game and the love that they put in this game, has just been just dashed, shadowed, yeah, by decisions that have been made by people. Who are higher ups in the company and yeah. that really stinks you know it i got to meet some of the happens. developers yeah. and and people who have put effort into this game 
and I could imagine how they feel by, you know, being crushed by decisions that have been made way above their heads. And, yeah. you know, all this backlash that they're getting, you know what I mean? Like just the developers who made the game, they're not making the decisions of, let's put these loot crates in here and do this, right? Yeah, like, you know. It's kind of coming from higher up. Like, you exactly. Know, you implement that. Yeah. It's really disappointing because I, yeah. I, I do feel like, I, I do feel like it was a good game that's really being overshadowed by this whole controversy. And, I really hope that EA learns their lesson from this. Um, chances are they won't. Yeah, we can only hope. I mean, it sounds like sales are down quite a bit. I mean, I don't know if they took a resurgence because of the did release you, of, you know, Last Jedi, but... Did you notice that the price was slashed over the holidays? Yeah, it was down yeah. to like 40 bucks. So yeah, that's, that's kind of an indication that it probably didn't sell what they were expecting mm -hmm. and I'm really hoping that if it hits their bottom line that you know they'll, they'll that will make them reconsider um, doing stuff like this in the future so uh, definitely one of the biggest disappointments of 2017 in terms of for me with the whole loot crate fiasco sure. and pay yeah. to win yeah uh, another one that I wanted to mention was Super Lucky's Tale uh, not a bad game not a great game kind of a just mediocre yeah. platformer uh, a bit of a throwback um, it's just as disappointing to me that this is all uh, one of the few games that Microsoft had to put, you know, they put yeah. so much weight behind Super Lucky's Tale. I was at the press conference at E3 <laughs> and I was like, wait, this really? is it? I'm like, this is a game that came out on the Oculus Rift. I mean, this is like a different version of it. Yeah. But I'm like, we've seen this before and it was an okay game on the Rift. Actually, I think the game on the on the Rift was actually better. Yeah, yeah, more highly regarded than, than this one. Yeah. But, uh, I played a couple hours of it and I just haven't gone back and I don't think I will. It's mm. it, it was okay. It's okay. Um, yeah. Just a little bit disappointing for me that yeah. this was something that they put so much behind and that's... I, yeah. Like if you compare that to... like that would be maybe what the 15th best game on the ps4 that and and this was like a a game that they actually devoted a bunch of time at yeah. the press conference to at the microsoft one and i was just really disappointed by that thank goodness so. they had cuphead at least this year because no oof. kidding yeah. um Oh, and that kind of falls into, I think, like, Ukulele, too, was another one that, like, really, I think, dropped the ball. Like, I, I didn't play it, but I've just heard really bad things. Yeah. No, I played a little bit of Ukulele. Um, I actually enjoyed it. Uh, the controls are not great. It's like it's like they made this throwback game and included all the negative stuff in it, too. Yeah. Like, they bad did. camera controls, and, like, it's truly, They didn't like, take into account, a like, throwback you know, 20 game. years of, like, advancements yes, exactly. and game development. Yeah. Um, but I kind of enjoyed it. I think I actually enjoyed ukulele more than super lucky's Tale. really yeah Interesting. I'm, I'm not gonna say ukulele is a, a great game no. but i mean if i had to i'd give it like a 6.5 or a yeah. 7 i think it's worth if you can get it cheap i think it's worth playing if you enjoyed like the old banjo kazooie yeah. games and no, i actually I, think that you would like it okay i actually want to borrow super lucky's tale off of okay. you and see what i think yeah because i have heard like some other takes too where it's like this game actually surprised me well right? there was a so, lot of negative negativity yeah. about it yeah so then so there was a lot of people bashing it and then there was a lot of like back to it's not that bad. Right. Which, that's what I you fall into. You do fall into that, but you're yeah. like, eh, it's not good enough for me to like want to invest the time in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, it, you know, for me, the disappointment comes in that that was a big game that Microsoft was pushing, and mm -hmm. it definitely does not live up to that amount of hype. And Right, you know. right. Um, okay, so uh, last thing before we leave off, because we're going pretty long with this yeah. one, um, was, okay, can you think of a game that you played quite a bit of this year that is definitely not going to get like any kind of game of the year consideration um i feel like steam world dig kind of qualifies a little bit in there just because no no not because it's not like a great game not denying that like i just think a lot of people will overlook it but like yeah, one, that, one point. that you think like won't even register i mean i do th i do think i totally think that steam world dig 2 will show up on a lot of people's top top tens okay um but like you said a lot of people won't won't get to it just because it's not like you know mainstream mainstream game oh, sure but uh I, I think i just spoiled it i think it's ukulele okay yeah like i actually sat yeah. down and played a good like three four hours of that game and yeah i was like i'm enjoying this frustrating controls like to the point where it was like i didn't want to throw my controller but i was but, squeezing it pretty tight yeah but i couldn't stop doing it like i kept trying it like okay. kept on trying it like and I was, it was to the point where, like, I couldn't complete something because the camera and the controls were so bad. Yeah. But I, I didn't put it down. I, I felt compelled to go through it. It's, it's like a collect fest. 
And like there's that part of like old school gaming, like N64 yeah, era yeah. that I enjoy. Taps like, into that. Yeah. 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 And uh, it, it really is, to me, it feels like an N64 game on, you know, a, a modern console, yeah. complete with all the frustrations. So. Yeah, yeah. Take that for what's worth, right? Yeah. I think <laughs> yeah. ukulele, actually, that's okay. the first one that comes to my head in terms yeah. of a game that people wouldn't necessarily think is great that I put a lot yeah. of time into this year. Yeah. So what, what's yours? Well, yeah, one that I definitely sunk like too much time into and really still want to go back is I mentioned at the you know top of the episode is you know Crash Bandicoot and same trilogy, um, just you know it's just that nostalgia factor com yeah. completely. It's like all three of these games I spent so much time on as a kid, um, you know, that, getting to play them again like on my PS4 with like improved graphics, yeah. um, just the, you know updates that like alleviate some of the annoyances in the first game or or well in, in, in all three I guess, um, just really help me get back in and then also you know getting trophies and stuff like that, that um it was helps. fun um i don't think they have aged as well as i thought maybe they would but like not as bad as some people were saying they're like oh man these games are just like not great and i'm like okay yeah but you know they are a product of their time but i think they are still very much playable yeah yeah kind of parallels ukulele a little bit a little bit yeah um yeah you you played through all the crash games growing up yes like multiple oh, yeah. times right yeah 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 so you oh yeah we, we, beat, we beat the original one and that's the hardest one and oh man there's a level that wanted to make me throw my controller yeah you were wall. saying in, the, in this one yeah uh going back to it but, i think uh, that's amazing that you and your parents played those games oh yeah yeah up. yeah that's so, super cool that was probably the one i spent yeah too much time on this year where i should have been playing some other stuff but yeah and what are you gonna do so, I mean, 2017, like we've mentioned many times, a uh, fantastic year. <laughs> what, is, what is 2018 going to do? Well, even, we, we have stuff to look forward to, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, we mentioned yeah. it, I think, in the previous podcast, just of a few things that are coming up. I mean, there's a ton of good stuff. And it's crazy to say this, potentially that 2018 could be a just as good. better year or just as Who good knows? as 2017. Yeah. But, I mean, we're not going to get a Zelda and a Mario game. No, that's so. going to be tough to beat. Nintendo's, yeah. I'll tell you, for sure it's going to be hard for Nintendo to top this year. I don't see that happening because we've already gone on record as stating that this may be Nintendo's best year ever. I know. It's just like, if they can just hold steady, I think it'll be enough. Yes. Do you think... Um, I think Smash will come out. I think Metroid Prime 4 will come out this year? Ooh, that's tough. That's if it does, it would be late. It yeah. be That could be their Christmas like holiday Maybe. release. That would totally work. It'll be yeah. interesting to see when we get the Nintendo timeline for this year. I just want to see it, what Xbox has this year. This is going to be a big year for E3. The, yeah. Oh, hopefully yeah. we get to go again. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. Stay tuned to Goliath.com. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of the Goliath Gamecast. As always, you can find the links to the Gamecast in the description below, yeah. or you can just find us on iTunes, Stitcher, the Google Play Store. You can find the video version of the podcast on uh, the uh, Goliath YouTube page. Just search Goliath dot com in in uh on youtube yeah and and if you are watching this in video form please um in the comments like leave your your top five favorite absolutely games. yeah we want to hear from you guys like what really you know captured your attention this year and yeah and also just list some of your disappointments surprises everything like that thank you guys so much for joining us and we'll see you next time see you later